right, let's see if I can make this work here. No indication that it's recording, but I think it is, so... Yes, I believe it is. Um, so we are going to go here. Two-round NFL mock draft, the debut of uh, the Barbecue Pit Sports. We're going into football. Uh, we do a mock draft every year. This is the first time we're going to be recording it. Uh, so we go in. It's pretty cool about this. As they give us all the tools here to make a good video. Enter the draft. Start the draft. First overall pick, Jacksonville Jaguars. I've heard there's a little bit of back and forth here uh, between whether I think the owner might want to pick Hutchinson and the uh, coach, the head coach, likes Trayvon Walker better. Ultimately, the owner gets the final say-so. Uh, best overall is Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, Trayvon Walker is a very good athlete, but um, his, his stock has been rising uh, exponentially. Uh, in the last few weeks leading up to the draft. I don't think to the number one, though. So number one, we're going to go Aiden Hutchinson there to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Number two, I had this going two different ways. I don't understand why Kayvon Thibodeau is falling as much as he is. Uh, I know he's, he's got a little bit of a – that people are questioning, you know, do is he – is his mind all in sports? Is this and that? Um, but he definitely does seem like the number two – guy off the board for uh, defensive end. With that being said, the Detroit Lions um, are looking to make a splash. And with that, and, and Trayvon Walker is that type of guy where he, he's an athletic guy. Uh, he can come in and make an immediate impact on the Detroit Lions defense. So although I think they should go Clay, Kayvon Thibodeau, I think they will go Trayvon Walker. Also want to mention that I didn't go, I didn't do a lot of trades i only did one um in both mock drafts i only had one uh you know the quarterback class is kind of slim so i didn't really do too much um with houston i got them a hundred percent you know a lot of people are saying go thibodeau uh stingley i think davis mills played exceptionally well in the past uh at, at the end of last season uh, so they're going to go to protect him. They're going to take the best offensive tackle in Akeem Kwanu, and uh, they're going to roll from there. The Jets, the Jets need a uh, a wide receiver and a cornerback duo. So you got to say, what are you going to take with four? What are you going to take with ten? Uh, is it going to be receiver first, then corner? Then is going or it's going to go corner and then receiver? Uh, I had them go in corner first. I think the receivers are a little bit uh, kind of like mid-first round heavy uh, with, with pretty much all the receivers. Um, so it was up to Stingley and Ahmad Gardner. For me, I think Ahmad Gardner is the more NFL-ready corner. He, he's a good playmaker. He's good at uh, attacking the ball in the air. Um, so I'm going to go Ahmad Gardner to the New York Jets at pick number four. <laughs> Giants on the clock. Giants have two picks, five and seven, early in the first round. They need offensive line help. Every single year, it seems like we talk about the fact that um, the Giants need offensive line help. Uh, they see uh, Akeem Aquanu go off the board at number three. Um, you know, do they take a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau? Do they take a guy like Derek Stingley uh, that's still available to them? Uh, I think no. I think their their need for offensive line is way more important. So they go Evan Neal out of Alabama with their number five pick, which puts the Carolina Panthers on the board. Now, the Carolina Panthers have came out and said they are not trading for Baker Mayfield before the draft, which means they're going to keep their pick and or they're going to trade to somebody else just to trade down from the pick. I got them keeping their pick. Um, you know, on one case – I could see them going for Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett is an NFL-ready quarterback. He is a guy that has a lot of experience in college, played all four years, I believe, um, and, and he should be ready to go day one. That being said, I think they're pretty confident in Sam Darnold, and they haven't really gave him a shot. I see a lot of people saying uh, the Panthers should go offensive line here. They should protect Sam Darnold. They should give him one last shot, and if not, whatever, get a quarterback next year. They got Bryce Young. They got uh, – T.J. Shroud coming out of Ohio State. So 
I've seen a good, good, good argument for offensive line here. I don't think so, man. I think with the best quarterback on the board sitting still, still here in, in um, Malik Willis, I don't think you go past him. He's he's a guy where you know quarterbacks, like I said earlier, quarterbacks should be you know late first round, early second round with the talent that they have this year. Uh, but when you got a guy like Malik Willis. You, you know there's a bunch of teams behind you that need quarterback. You got to take a guy like that, a mobile, strong-arm quarterback, uh, which is what you really need in the NFL today. So uh, Malik Willis goes to the Carolina Panthers at six, uh, which puts the New York Giants back on the clock. Perfect scenario for the New York Giants because left on the board is still Kayvon Thibodeau and Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton, Jabril Peppers, and um, Jabril Peppers and Logan Ryan both left in free agency, uh, leaving the Giants kind of weak at safety. Um, but they also have one of the worst pass rushing defenses in the league. Um, so with a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau, who could have went as early as the first, second, or third overall pick, to land him at seven would be a dream for the New York Giants. So I got them taking Kayvon Thibodeau and improving their pass rush at pick number seven. Uh, Atlanta Falcons on the clock. They seem to be ready to roll with – with. Um, Marcus Mariota. I don't. I don't see them grabbing a quarterback with their first, uh, with their number eight pick, just because it's a little high for a quarterback one and two. They have other needs. Calvin Ridley is currently um, uh, suspended for the season. Um, so, uh, other than Cordell Patterson, that doesn't leave many weapons for Marcus Mariota to to work with. So they got. Two really good options for him here, Garrett Wilson and Drake London. Garrett Wilson's a guy who, who's got everything. He's got run after catch. He's got route running. He's got the deep ball. He's got the speed. He's got pretty much everything you could want in a wide receiver. And he played at Ohio State um, starting over James, Wentz, uh, James Williams, Jameson Williams, uh, playing side, neck and neck with Chris Olave. Uh, so they had a bunch of talent in Ohio State and Garrett Wilson – uh, shined in that talented wide receiver room. Uh, but then you also have Drake London, who is the best pound-for-pound 50-50 ball uh, receiver in the draft. And uh, so that, you know, red zone, uh, red zone touchdowns, uh, the Atlanta Falcons were one of the worst teams in the league last year in red zone touchdowns. So uh, getting a guy like Drake London who can significantly improve your 50-50 ball um, would definitely help you score once you're in the red zone. Uh, which could lead to more wins. But if not, you know, you're one of the worst teams in the league last year. You run it back. You get one of the top ten picks next year. And Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud should be sitting right waiting for you. So I'm going to go with number eight, Drake London. Here's the trade. Number nine, we're going to trade. Seattle Seahawks are going to go after their man and get him. Uh, Drew Locke, you know, I, d don't get me wrong. Drew Locke could be a great quarterback in this league. Um, he's had his chance uh, once in Denver. Um, I don't see, uh, I don't see Seattle being content with just sitting on him. So I think nine and forty-one. Where is? Why can't I scroll down? Okay, I must say that's going to drive me crazy. For Baker Mayfield is the trade. That trade is accepted uh, because I've already tried this. So number nine goes to Cleveland Browns, who have one of the worst receiving cores uh, in the NFL at the moment. They have Amari Cooper. They got via trade. But other than that, you're looking at Jakeem Grant. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, nobody really that could take the top off, no speedsters, no uh, no deep ball guys. And uh, you got a guy like James Hill Williams still sitting there. You got Garrett Wilson still sitting there. And you still have Chris Olave, who although he's coming off an injury, uh, is still very, very dangerous in the uh, as, as a route runner. I think that uh, Jameson Williams will have some guys, some, some teams pass on him just because of the injury uh, being so late last year. Um, so I'm going to go Garrett Wilson to the um, 
Cleveland Browns. Let's see. Let me just catch up on my notes here. Um, so the Jets go corner with their first pick. They need a receiver. They see Garrett Wilson come off the board. They see Drake London go, come off the board. Those were their first two options. Um, they're scrambling. They don't really know what to do. Um, they got uh, Elijah Moore. They got Braxton Berrios. So they got the the slot receivers down. They got they got athletic receivers. I don't think they're going to take a chance on Jameson Williams there. Uh, but Chris Olave sitting there for them at ten. Uh, is perfect. So I got the Jets going. Chris Olave putting Washington on the board. Let's see what we got for Washington. Uh, Washington, you know, they say they need a quarterback. I don't really buy that. They just brought in Carson Wentz. I don't think um, I don't think they're going to reach and try to grab another quarterback there. Uh, linebacker, okay. They could get those later in the draft. I see uh, a need for inside offensive line. So I'm going to go Tyler Lindenbaum out of Iowa to kind of beefing up that offensive line of Washington, uh, trying to push them into the playoffs next year. Let's see. Minnesota. Minnesota seems easy. Minnesota has uh, a few needs here, uh, inside offensive line, edge rusher, and corner. Uh, the best possible scenario for them right now would be to take Derek Stingley Jr., uh, to put opposite of Patrick Peterson. They do that at 12, which puts the Houston Texans back on the board. In prime position, they took the best offensive lineman in the draft with their first pick. Now they get uh, one of the top five prospects. Kyle Hamilton looked like a a top three pick coming into the draft. Now safety is kind of a hard position um, to go top three. Uh, which is why Houston lands him at 13. But Houston lands the best safety in the draft and the best offensive lineman in the draft. Uh, great draft for the Houston Texans, which brings us to the Baltimore Ravens, who don't really have many needs. They got a uh, cornerback. Um, they could use a cornerback. But if we look here, the top cornerbacks available uh, after Stingley and Ahmad Gardner kind of drop off a little bit. And they also need defensive line, interior defensive line. They brought back Calais Campbell, um, but he should be back for just a year or two, and then uh, he should be going. So they should need uh, interior defensive line, which these two guys here, Devontae Wyatt and Jordan Davis, I think kind of go hand in hand a little bit. Uh, I like personally Jordan Davis a little bit better, uh, so I give him the nod to Baltimore first, uh, which brings us to Philly. Right before my New Orleans Saints, they got two needs, two big glaring needs, DB and wide receiver, um, one of the worst wide receiving cores in the league as well, uh, right next to Cleveland. Uh, and they also need linebackers. So we're sitting here currently, we have, you know, you have a Jamison Williams. You have uh, Devin Lloyd sitting there that could go at 15, uh, the best linebacker, inside linebacker in the draft. You got Trent McDuffie. Uh, it really depends on which way they're going to spin it. They also have number 18. So they kind of have to look at New Orleans and, and uh, not San Diego, fuck, uh, the Chargers to see which, which, who is going to get taken in those two picks. And I think what they see is, is that New Orleans is going to really need a wide receiver. They go ahead and take the rug right under them and take Jamison Williams with that pick there. Heartbreaking for me as a Saints fan. I really hope that the Saints find a way to trade up a little bit and uh, and snag a wide receiver in front of Philly. Uh, but Philly, you know, they whiffed on Jalen Rager. They whiffed on uh, Arcadia Whiteside. So they are looking to get it right here with Jameson Williams. Uh, we talked about the Saints needing a wide receiver. They do. They also need offensive line after losing uh, Terry on Armstead. And they also need a quarterback. They are desperate for a quarterback. So when you look here, you, you take one look back to uh, um, the Chargers, and the Chargers need O-line. The Chargers need O-line, wide receiver depth, cornerback depth, but what they don't need is a quarterback, so you know you're safe, at least if you want a quarterback. The wide receivers kind of dumped off after Jameson Williams. They kind of drop in skill level a little bit. So Charles Cross, who I believe is a top three uh, offensive tackle this year, uh, undoubtedly a top three offensive tackle and could compete with Evan Evan Neal for that number two tackle spot. Um, he goes number 16 
to the New Orleans Saints who get a little bit of help for James Winston and uh, try to beef up that offensive line a little bit. We talked about um, L.A. L.A. needs a line. Uh, they need to protect their investment in Justin Fields. Or out Justin Fields. Fucking uh, Justin Herbert. Um, so where are they going here? I think all three of these guys, Bernard Rainman, uh, Tyler Smith, and Trevor Penning are all uh, very good prospects. I think that uh, Trevor Penning would be the leading out of the three. I know his uh, ADP rank um, is, is the highest out of those three, but his positional rank is the furthest down from those three. I still go Trevor Penning there for the Chargers. Um, Philly, perfect position once again. Do they go Trent McDuffie or do they go Devin Lloyd? I think best linebacker in the draft would be better suited for them right there. Uh, so they go with Devin Lloyd. Which leaves the Saints here again. Just take one look at the wide receiver core just to see what we got here. These are all guys that should, should. I mean, the, some of these guys, you know, two or three of these guys probably be taken at the end of the first round. But some of these guys, Christian Watson, John Mateshi, uh, Jahan Dodson, uh, should be left in the second round for them to try to pick from in the second round. So I think... They try to cut Pittsburgh off. Pittsburgh is likely going to be going for their hometown man uh, and Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett is the most NFL-ready quarterback in the draft. I think uh, the New Orleans Saints try to go after their future here and draft Kenny Pickett at 19. Um, you know, it all hit the Steelers quick. The Steelers, they were sitting there. They were like, God, we're going to get him. We're going to get him. Uh, they see Malik Willis go off the board early. They say, okay, let's just stay put. Let's try to get a hold of Kenny Pickett. The first Saints pick, they don't take Kenny Pickett, so, so the Steelers think they're okay. They sit still. Uh, they lose Kenny Pickett. Uh, so they look at the draft board. Who do they got? They got Matt Carell, Carson Strong, Sam Howell, and Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter is by far the most mobile out of all of those guys. He has a very strong arm. He's accurate down the field. I think uh, out of these four guys, unless Pittsburgh just packs it in and says we'll wait till next year, I think out of these four guys, Desmond Ritter is the guy for for Pittsburgh. That's where they go there. Um, Patriots take best available. George Car Carla Fitz, Carla Fitz uh, is going to be a great uh, addition to their pass rush. Uh, he's a he's big, big, lengthy, uh, good at um, – at fighting hands on the defensive line. Um, so it should be good fit for the, the Patriots. Patriots say they need a wide receiver. They just picked up Devontae Parker. I don't see them really going wide receiver this early. So uh, George Cara, Cara, Cara Fitz, Fitz, however the hell you want to say his name. Uh, dude, Aaron Rodgers just signed a contract. He lost Devontae Parker and um, not Devontae Parker. I got it wrong. Devontae Adams. Shit, my bad. Uh, Devontae Adams, and they also lost uh, Marquez uh, Valdez-Scanley to Kansas City. So they are, are needing weapons to pack to give Aaron Rodgers something, give him something to throw to. Um, and I think you see the picks here would be Traylon Burks or George Pickens would be the two picks that, uh, that Green Bay would be picking from. Pickens, a little bit scary because of his injury. Uh, late last year or, or, or for last year and uh, Burks being the safer pick, but I think George Pickens gives them more options in the downfield ball uh, Aaron Rodgers is a really strong arm. So he's, he, he likes to throw the ball downfield. Uh, so I think George Pickens is going to be where they go there. Uh, Arizona Cardinals, uh, you know, Arizona is a really good team right now. They, they could use some inside offensive line, uh, they could use some inside defensive line, cornerback help, maybe even some wide receiver help. But if you look at the top of the draft board here, uh, I don't see them going anywhere else but defensive line and Devontae Wyatt. Uh, so that's where they go here. Pretty easy for the Cowboys. Cowboys need offensive line. They lost Connor Williams. They lost uh, – fuck, what's the other guy's name? I forget the other guy's name, but they lost a couple of offensive linemen, uh, so they need some depth. They go Bernard Rainman there. Buffalo, um, losing Emmanuel Sanders, losing uh, Cole Beasley. They need wide receiver. Uh, they need defensive line depth. 
Um, I think they could use um, a little help on the, the secondary, you know, cornerback position. Um Uh, with that being said, we just were talking about Traylon Burks being very slept on and possibly going before George Pickens. I think he goes here to Buffalo um, to get a little bit more depth in their wide receiver room. Tennessee uh, sits sits there and they say, damn, uh, they took the wide receiver from us. We kind of uh, need a little bit of offensive line help in the middle, uh, and they also need – Ed rushers, man. They need somebody to get to the quarterback. Uh, they've been lacking that for the past few years, I'd say. Um, consistent um, pass rushing. And I think there's three guys here that they're going to have their eyes on. I think Jermaine Johnson, um, Drake Jackson, and Josh Bichel will all be on uh, Tennessee's radar. I think they go with the best available, Jermaine Johnson, though, and they pick him at 26. <laughs> Scoot forward a little bit. Lewis, we got Tennessee, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay doesn't really need much. Um, they could use uh, some secondary help, I believe. Um, but I think where they're really going to go just to try to make themselves a Super Bowl contender again is get help on the inside offensive line. And that is Zion Johnson out of Boston College, a guard uh, that can significantly help them. Uh, at later in the season if they have to deal with injuries and shit like that. Um, Green Bay Packers back on the, the clock. They went wide receiver with their first pick. I don't think they're going to go back-to-back wide receivers, especially being this far back in the in the first round. Maybe they trade up and they get one of the better uh, wide receivers in the draft. But for right now, I think sitting where they are, they're going to take Tyler Smith, a tackle, uh, give themselves more depth at, at offensive line. They dealt with the – injury to uh, Bacchieri for a good bit last year. So I think they're going to want to have some backups there in offensive line. They go Tyler Smith. Uh, back-to-back picks for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, it's hard to really say what they need in this draft. I think losing Tyreek Hill and, uh, you know, they did bring in Juju Smith-Schuster. They did bring in uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Um, but they still could use – some more depth. I mean, we, we I, I'm going to talk – I've said it a bunch already, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. But depth is is very important for these teams, especially when they're not drafting in the top ten. These guys – you know, some of these guys may start day one. Um, some of these guys might start day one, um, but I think that um, – most of these guys they're looking at here at the back half of this are, are just going to be depth guys. Uh, so two guys I'm looking at with Kansas City um, just to replace that wide receiver void is John Matechi and Christian Watson. Small school for Christian Watson, not a lot of uh, film to go up against great teams. He doesn't know what he looks like going against good good defenses. Uh, John Matechi playing for Alabama. That is the opposite for him, although Matechi is coming off of an injury. So – what, what risk are they going to take there? Like I said, they do have Valdez Scanley. They do have McCole Hardman. They do have Juju Smith-Schuster. I think they go with the project and John Mateshi here at 29. At 30, um, they just lost Tredavious Ward. So I think um, they're going to go corner and the best corner available right now, Trent McDuffie, uh, in my opinion, probably should have went about 10 picks ago. Um, but he falls to number 30 with Kansas City. Cincinnati's here again. Uh, I didn't think Cincinnati needed much, man. Cincinnati got um, – uh, they, they beefed up their offensive line in free agency. They they still have a good wide receiver core. They got Joe Mixon, Joe Burrow. Um, they got a good defense. They could use linebacker. linebacker I, I think if I'm leaning one way or the other, it's either going to be corner or linebacker. Um and I think I'm going to go linebacker. So, N'Kobe Dean um, is probably going to be their best bet at 31, uh, beefing up their linebacker core. And then that puts the Lions back on the on the board for number 32. I think in one of these drafts that I did, I had Detroit going quarterback just because of the way it played out. I think uh, Desmond Ritter made his way back to 32 um, for Detroit. But – 
I mean, Detroit needs a defense, man. They, they got um, in their first pick, they were able to secure Trayvon Walker and help off the edge. Um, I would like to see them go um, inside linebacker here, but with Nicobe Dean gone and Devin Lloyd gone, I think their next best options are pretty far, few and far between. Um, so I think they're probably going to go corner. I do see a couple of safeties that I like. Um, Daxton Hill, who could play this, the slot or safety. Lewis Sign. Um, there's a couple of guys I like at the safety position. Um, and then there's Kier Elam and Andrew Booth Jr. sitting there at corner. I think they go Andrew Booth Jr., uh, one of the higher rated corners, um, and definitely could help them right off the bat. And also the Lions pick, it's going to go Jacksonville and then Detroit once again. So uh, they're going to be right back, you know, in the mix w- within the next pick or so. Um, I think that Jacksonville could use a good slot guy. Uh, on defense, they could use a guy that that could play safety. They could use that safety, and they could use down in the slot. So I'm going to go Daxton Hill at the number 33 pick for Jacksonville. We're going to speed it up a little bit, going into the second round. Detroit, uh, I think this is where they decide, hey, let's settle down. Maybe next year, if we're in this position again, we go quarterback again. Um, but for right now, let's find somebody. That can that can compete with with Jared Goff. See if we can get somebody that we could possibly, um, you know, look into the future and grab. So Sam Howell is that guy here at thirty four for me. Um, Sam Howell, I think a year or two ago was looked at as possibly the number one overall, um, but you know, he, he went back to school and whatever happened. So back to the drawing board. Second, early second round for Sam Howell going to Detroit Lions. Jets back on the clock. They went wide receiver. They went corner. Um, I think it's time to beefing up their defense here. They're looking at the linebacker core, and they look at Quay Walker, who, just like Trayvon Walker, is a great athlete. He, he, he's an athletic guy, uh, double-digit tackles all three of his seasons. Um or, or double digit or triple digit, I can't remember. But uh, Quay Walker is going to be a force to be reckoned with and possibly a day one starter for the New York Jets. New York Giants back on the clock. Uh, they went edge rusher and offensive line with their first couple of picks. Uh, I think linebacker could be uh, a need for them here. Let's look at what linebackers are left here on the board. Uh, other than Leo Chantel and um, Brian Asamua, I think you know linebacker kind of drops off. Uh, I did say they did they do need safety. They could use safety help, um, but that's not that's not where it's at for me. Where it's at for me is I think they're going to go inside offensive line. They're going to try to beef up that offensive line even more. Every year they're talked about Giants need offensive line. Giants need offensive line. Giants need offensive line. Uh, they get it here with Ke- Kenyon Je- uh, Green out of Texas A&M. Houston back on the board. They got the best offensive lineman. They got the best safety. Uh, who do they go with here? Um, I think you got to bother some of your wide receiver core, man. They they you know, they pretty much need everything. Sky Moore fell to them at thirty seven. They go Sky Moore there. Uh, the Jets pick again. Uh, They just picked – I just want to make sure that I'm remembering this correctly, but I'm pretty sure the Jets just – Yes, the Jets just went linebacker. Um, They picked – they lost Marcus May uh, this past season – uh, they failed to get Marcus Williams. They lost Marcus May. So I think they're going to look to bring in a safety is where I had them going with this pick. If we look at the safeties, I think you got there. There's there's the top two high safety is Jaquan Brisker. The top one high safety is Lewis Sign. I think one is easier to teach than the other. So Lewis Sign goes to the New York Jets at pick 38. Uh, the Bears on the clock for 39. Um, 
you know, their first pick at 39, not good, but they need wide receiver help. They, their best wide receiver is Dar- Darnell Mooney. And then after that, it kind of trickles down a little bit. So uh, luckily, Christian Watson still sitting there for them at 39. They take a chance on the small school guy. Christian Watson goes to the Chicago Bears to try to help out Justin Fields. That brings uh, the Seattle Seahawks onto uh, onto the clock for their first pick after receiving Baker Mayfield earlier in the draft. Uh, they need corner. They need corner pretty bad. I mean, they, their defense needs a lot of help. They need edge rusher. They need corner. Um, offensive line could use a little help. But I think w- with uh, Kair Elam still sitting here on the board, you got to take him at 40, uh, which puts Cleveland back on the board. Cleveland, um, let's see what they need. I thought they needed D-line, inside D-line. Uh, they go Travis Jones here with 41. Uh, Colts back on the board. They could use a wide receiver. They go small school Jalen Tolbert um, for wide receiver there. Uh, Atlanta. Atlanta. I want to just take one look really quick. Atlanta picked... In this mock draft, Drake London first. So they went wide receiver first. They took care of that need. Uh, quarterback, I think they're going to rock with um, uh, Mariota this season. Uh, offensive line, they could use a little help, but I think right here where they're drafting at offensive line, uh, you'd have to go kind of further down into the, the, the picks to get one. I think they just picked up Casey Howard in free agency. They have um, A.J. Terrell. Uh, they could use a good slot guy, Jalen uh, Petrie, uh, very underrated corner, one of the best slot uh, corners in this draft. I got them taking uh, him here at 43. He goes to Atlanta. Back on the clock is Cleveland. Um Cleveland's tough, man. You know, they got so many picks in the the, the beginning part of the second round um, because of the trade. Uh, so they're tough. They got good defense. Uh, they got a bad receiving core, but they picked receiver earlier. And after that, you know, they're looking at return men and, and kind of guys that are in the, the depth part of receiver, which if you don't have depth to begin with, or, or what do you add them for? Uh, but I think adding depth at the edge rusher to help uh, Miles Garrett and guys like that um, would be great. So I got Aaron Abikati, uh at a Penn State going to Cleveland at 44. That puts um, their interconference rival Baltimore Ravens on the clock. Uh, they addressed their, their need at inside defensive line in their last pick. They also need corner. Um, I think they got they got three guys really here that, that it's kind of up in the air with to me, and that would be Kyler Gordon, Roger McCreary, and Cam Taylor Britt. Um, the best ADP going to Kyler Gordon. He is also the highest positional ranked guy. I think it's a no-brainer. Kyler Gordon goes to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, puts Minnesota back on the clock again. Minnesota. Let's look. Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota. I got them going edge, man. They they although uh, they addressed corner early. I think um, they could have uh, a little bit of a, a say to get an inside offensive lineman here to help for Dalvin Cook. Um, but it, it's between edge rusher Nick Bonatino, and then you'd have to go check out the inside offensive line prospects that we have left here. 
uh, in Dylan Farham. But also, let's just look at tackle. Because, I, I, you know, I think on the fly, and I think that if they could pull in a tackle, oh, yes, perfect. Perfect for Minnesota. Minnesota needs help protecting their investments uh, in the backfield. They do that um, with Luke Godeke at pick 46. Uh, you could probably move to the inside play guard a little bit, but he plays tackle primarily, uh, which brings us to Washington. Washington uh, has that need um, at inside O-line, has that need at linebacker. They took um, they took Linderbaum with that first pick. Uh, so with this pick here, I got them going linebacker Leo Chanel from Wisconsin there. That brings us to Chicago once again. Uh, Chicago, they gave uh, Justin Fields a weapon with their first pick. I say they go uh, protection with their second pick of the draft. So I'm going to go look at offensive tackle here. And Abraham Lucas out of Washington State is still sitting here at pick 48. We're going to take him for Chicago. That puts the New Orleans Saints back on the draft board here. Now, the Saints address the, the offensive line. They address their um, they address their offensive line. They address their quarterback issue. I think right now would be the time to address their wide receiver issue. Although, you know, it's not going to be a, uh, a perfect fix for them, like you would say. I do think that um, drafting a guy like Jahan Dotson would help them, one, in the return game, and two, just give a little bit more depth uh, at the wide receiver position. Although I do think they should still sign somebody uh, in the remaining part of free agency at the wide receiver position. But they go Jahan Dotson there at 49 uh, 50 Kansas City Chiefs, they need to replace Tyron Matthew. Tyron Matthew is leaving in free agency. They go Jaquan Brisker at number 50. Philly, Philly took care of their wide receiver needs. Uh, they took care of the linebacker. I think Philly is going to be the first one here that reaches a little bit for a running back. I think Miles Sanders... Uh, was was back and forth a little bit last year, and they could use somebody uh, a little bit more depth just in case an injury comes. I think they go best uh, running back in the draft for Reese Hall at 51. Uh, their interstate foes, Pittsburgh Steelers, back on the board here. Uh, they got their quarterback in Desmond Ritter. I think losing Juju Smith-Schuster, they could – afford to grab another wide receiver here. Um, should we go wide receiver? Wide receiver is not really so much sitting there for them uh, in the draft. I did the draft. I had them sitting with Sky Moore. Sky Moore fell to him. Um, but, of course, he got taken a little bit earlier. So we're going to go offensive line depth for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Zach Tom out of Wake Forest. <laughs> Green Bay Packers. We're going to take a little look back to see what the Green Bay Packers got earlier in the draft. They got uh, George Pickens at receiver and Tyler Smith at tackle. Uh, so with this pick, uh, they lost in Darius Smith in free agency. I'd like to see them go defensive and kind of an edge rusher. Drake Jackson still sitting there for them at 53. Perfect pick. Drake Jackson goes to the Green Bay Packers. New England Patriots back up. Uh, they took care of their edge rushing needs uh, with their first pick. Like I said, Devontae Parker coming to the the Patriots. I don't think they need uh, a wide receiver here early. Um, but what they do need is to replace J.C. Jackson. And although this late in the draft, they probably won't get an immediate replacement. Roger McCreary will definitely help their depth at cornerback. I have them taking McCreary at 54. Uh, that puts Arizona back on board. Arizona, let's look to see how we can help the Arizona Cardinals, who I believe took – God flipping damn it. 
How do you lose the fucking scroll bar that much? Arizona need ends. Oh, that's perfect. Arizona lost Chandler Jones. They look to put immediately immediate replacement at edge. Nick Bontino at Oklahoma. They get there. Cowboys took O line first. Uh, they lose uh, Randy Gregory. They fill that spot with Josh Pachel uh, as the edge rushers are going off the board pretty quick. Uh, that brings us to the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills. Uh, they took their wide receiver earlier. Uh, they could use some linebacker help, but I'm going to skip down here to Kenneth Walker the uh, third. You know, Zach Moss and Devin Singletary are good running backs, but I'd say running back is definitely one of the weaker positions for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, so I'm going to go Kenneth Walker the third, just to add a little bit more depth. Uh, and Walker is also a really good receiving back, so worst comes to worst, he can always be thrown in on pass plays, a good pass blocker. Um, and we're back to the Atlanta Falcons once again. What are they going to do? They're this far down in the draft. Fuck it. Let's just grab somebody to, to compete with Mariota. And if it doesn't work out, hey, we always got next year. There's always Bryce Young. There's always C.J. Shroud. So they go Matt Corral here at pick 58, the quarterback out of Mississippi. Green Bay Packers back on the board. Um, what are you going to do if you're Green Bay, man? There's not there's not many options here. I think with between linebacker Brian Asmuma and Troy Anderson are two very good picks for, for Green Bay. I think Troy Anderson being the, the favorite in my opinion. So they go Troy Anderson, beef up their linebacker room just a little bit more uh, going into the third round. Tampa Bay, they're back. They lost to Darius Ward. No, Travis Ward played for uh, – who's going to call it? So let's see what our interior looks like right here. No, they went in interior first pick. So let's see what our interior D line looks like here. Logan Hall. Psh. Let's go here. See what we can do here. Uh, Cam Taylor Britt sitting here at, at 60. I think it, they would be silly to pass on him. If the draft goes down like this and he's sitting there at pick 60, they got to beef up that cornerback room and go Cam Taylor Britt. 49ers. Um, 49ers, they say they need cornerback. I don't think they do because they're the ones that picked up Tredavious Ward. Um I think they got Verrett coming back and uh, Emmanuel Mosley. So uh, not the best cornerback room, but they definitely have depth there. Uh, inside O-line, I'm not sure if they should go that way either. I think this late in the draft, they're going to say, you know what, Debo Samuel, we don't want to lose him. We want to keep him on the roster. But just in case he leaves, let's get a guy that we think could come in here and provide us some more depth at the receiver position. Um, Kyle Phillips, Calvin Austin the third. It's a toss up. Uh, either one could have been picked here, in my opinion. I think they go Calvin Austin the third. Kansas City back on the board once again. What are they gonna do? They are going to just keep beating the dead horse and they're gonna try to keep protecting their boy Pat Mahomes, I think. I think uh Jameer Say Sailor out of Georgia is Probably the best pick they could take at 62. I don't think there's really anybody else um, that, in my opinion, they should be taking. Um, but uh, Jameer Sayer at 62 for Kansas City is my pick. Again, Cincinnati doesn't need much. They, they really, really don't need much. Um, I think uh, they could, in the AFC, get to the quarterback a little faster. Uh, so adding a little bit more depth, that edge rusher would be great. David Ajabeu, Ajabo, Ajabo is going to be my pick here at 63 for Cincinnati. And then Denver with their only pick of the first two rounds, their most desperate need right now is cornerback. So for the draft, we are going to go and address their need at corner. 
we're going to look. And we have Marcus Jones sitting here at Houston. I think that you don't want to take a chance on the small school Tyreek Woolen. And then, um, you know, after that, it kind of, again, drops off just a little bit at corner. So I'm going to go Marcus Jones at the last pick of the second round for the Broncos. So if you look through, we're going to have a, an image come up of the first round at least. Uh, we're going to take a look here. Stay in your seat grading my draft. I don't need it to be graded. I know it's phenomenal. Let's go. Let's get the fuck out of here. We got uh, – if, if you take a look here, this is what we did. Hutchinson first, Walker second, Aquino third to Houston. Uh, the Jets get Ahmad Gardner and Chris Olave with their first two. The Giants get Evan Neal and Kayvon Thibodeau with their first two. Uh, the Panthers get Malik Willis to fight with uh, Sam Darnold for the starting spot all year. Uh, Atlanta upgrades their red zone offense with getting Drake London. Um, the Browns get rid of Baker Mayfield. Uh, they send him to Seattle. They pick up Garrett Wilson in the first round. Washington helps the O-line. Um, what else is intriguing? Uh, Philly tries not to get it wrong. Once again, they pick up Jameson Williams, uh, new Orleans, of course, addressing their offensive line and quarterback needs, getting Kenny Pickett and Charles cross, um, uh, Steelers settling for Desmond Ritter, uh, green Bay picking up their wide receiver and offensive lineman. They think they need Tennessee getting some much needed pass rush help. Um, I think overall this is probably going to be the way the, the draft goes down. This has been our 2022 barbecue pit NFL mock draft. Uh, the draft is coming up this weekend, Thursday and Friday, I believe. Make sure you stay tuned and come back to this video and make sure that I got it right because I did a lot of research. And I've had two different drafts here, both drafts. Um, significantly different. And this third draft I did being just a little bit different than the most recent draft uh, that I drew up. So uh, hopefully we got it right. Um, until next time, stay barbecue.